So hello everyone, I'm Brian. Welcome back to my shop. Today, we're making a vacuum table for the CNC router. Okay, so what is a vacuum table? Well, quite simply, it's just something to hold your workpiece down to the bed of the CNC. Uh, does everyone need one? Everybody that has a CNC router, do you need a vacuum table? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Depends on the kind of work you do. If you are doing one-off parts, carvings in wood, signs, anything that you can clamp, screw, and even use double-sided tape, then, you know, maybe not. However, if you cut sheet goods, uh, in particular thin, uh, flexible materials, say plastics or maybe thin aluminum sheet, thin plywood, then you probably could use a vacuum table. Uh, what are some of the pros and cons? Uh, I would say that, you know, the pros are, as we said, it holds flat sheets tight to the table, which can be very critical when you're have to control the Z depth of your machine, like in particular engraving. Uh, there's an instance where you're using generally a thin flexible material that may have a surface you need to just skim down by five thousand, seven thousandths of an inch. So the Z height is critical and that means you need to maintain perfect flatness of the sheet. And if you've ever used engraving material, you know that's quite a challenge. Um, cons, well, let's just say you either have to buy one or build one and, you know, takes time to build one, takes money to buy one. I can, I can tell you that even if you do not have a CNC router and you do template routing of many different types of material, plastic, metal, I've successfully template routed aluminum using a va vacuum table fixture, uh, plastic as well. Uh, it's a common part I used to build and I've been using one for probably about two and a half, three years. Uh, I'll show you a, a quick little video of that, um, show you how you can use it even if you don't, do not have a CNC machine and you're just using a manual router. It's uh, quite useful. Another pro of using a vacuum table is, uh, well, let's say you were holding parts down with double-sided tape or screws. Uh, if you have a full sheet that you're cutting out repetitive parts, uh, you basically have to put screws surrounding every part or, or double-sided tape under every part, uh, especially if you're pro cu profile cutting. Uh, when you go to cut that part out, it can break loose and, you know, go flying around the shop, damage the part, damage your router. Uh, and, you know, that means you have to put those screws in, take those screws out, peel that tape off. It's, it's, it can be a real pain when you have quantities. So with a vacuum table, the vacuum does all the work, when the part's done, it's done. My vacuum table design is, is essentially just like many others you may have seen on YouTube already. Uh, there's quite a few builds. Most of them are great. That's basically how I got the inspiration to build mine. Um, it's a simple construction. You don't have to use the CNC to really build it if you don't want to. Uh, some people actually drill the holes you know, by hand. Uh, we have CNC rotters, why not use that? But the materials readily available, MDF, plywood, you can use particle board. You know, it's, you know, it's up to your, what you have or, or your imagination. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. And again, it's powered by a shop vac. Uh, who doesn't have a shop vac? So this entire project is made from three quarter inch MDF. And the first thing to do was rip the base to width. The length will be a little long and trimmed later. And I did a test layout on the base to make sure that everything I located in the CNC file was actually where I needed it to be. And I secured the base to the spoil board of my machine. These screws will be removed later. And I ran a test cut. And I'm glad I did this actually because I screwed up and the uh, origin of my CNC file didn't match the origin of my machine. It was off about 3 eighths. So I made the adjustment and then I can machine in all the dados for the center ribs and sides. And 
and little square pockets for the support blocks. So I ripped the stock for the support blocks to wit. And then cut them to length. There were 12 altogether. So I glued the little support blocks down in their pockets. This is going to actually have to be done twice. Uh, the router bit I'm using to bore the holes through them is can only go 7 8 of an inch deep. And that means I had to do this in two layers. You can see here that the hole in the pockets are exactly lined up above the T-slots. And once the glue had dried, I re-drilled the holes to the support blocks. And then it was time to add the second layer. And then re-drill the holes one more time. And I measure for the sides and ribs, which have to match the same height as the blocks. So I rough cut the stock and then ripped it to width and then cut it to length. So then I test fit everything. So I marked the location of screw holes where I'm going to use square head trim screws to secure the ribs to the base. And I really only needed these to hold these in place while the glue dried. And I drilled 1 8 pilot holes all the way through and I used the drill press to try and keep everything square. And next was to glue and screw the sides and ribs down. And you can see here I'm using a clamp which keeps the screw from splitting the MDF. And at the back side of the table there's a gap which is where the vacuum hose will connect. We'll see more of that later. Next was to take a light trim cut off the top of everything to make sure it was perfectly flat. And I just used the router's handheld controller to do this manually. So I had to rearrange the screws in order to ensure that the ones in the middle weren't trapped after I put the top on. So finally it was time to glue the top down. And then of course secure it with some screws. And we added some weight to be extra sure it can stay flat. And then I drilled the holes one more time for the mounting bolts. And they were counterboard to keep the head of the mounting bolt from sticking up above the table. And then I ran the CNC file to drill the quarter inch holes for the vacuum to come up and secure the piece to the table. The program took about two hours to run. So I took the opportunity to do a little maintenance round shot. There was a grid of 22 by 46 quarter inch holes spaced on one inch centers. That's a total of 1,006 holes. And it was about as much fun as watching paint dry. Okay, so with the machining and the CNC done, it's off the table. And I removed the screws holding the top down. Now the glue had dried. And trimming the end flush that my CNC couldn't reach. And flush cutting it, sanding it smooth. That rectangular hole you see there is where the vacuum will attach. So I had a reinforced block made out of MDF that I drilled a two inch hole in and that whole assembly simply screwed right over that opening. So I'm not exactly sure how to explain this next step, but since the vacuum table itself covered the T-slots that it was mounted to, I had to devise a way to be able to drop the bolts down in and line them up with the T-nuts below. But since the table covered the T-tracks, it seemed next to impossible. 
So my solution was to make one long custom T-nut that was basically three T-nuts in one. And I did this by using some one eighth by half aluminum flat bar. However, I did have to splice the aluminum bar because what was available at my local home center wasn't long enough. So I simply did this with an overlapping piece of hawk rivets. and I drilled and tapped holes where the T-nuts would go directly below the mounting holes in the table. It seemed to be a pretty clever solution and it worked really well. With those made, it was pretty straightforward to attach it to the CNC machine. I simply slid the table forward, lined up the first bolt, and that kind of registered everything where it needed to be. And I can install the rest of the bolts and everything lined right up. So the final step was to take a fly cut or a light skim cut off the entire surface of the table, which made sure it was parallel with the CNC machine. 